All right, so real estate has been challenging lately. It's getting harder to find good deals. It's been harder to, even harder to find deals that actually make sense. And you know, as an operator, somebody that raises money and operates deals, uh, it's four or five times as hard to do a deal. The reason why is because you're having to put instead of 20% down on a large multifamily, similar to this one, you're putting 30, 40, 50% down to be able to get the same. So you're having to raise more money. Also, investors are less likely to want to give money to something when interest rates are higher. So we're seeing it. We're seeing some deals where cash flow is kind of going away. If you have multifamily deals, you may be able to relate to that. Uh, we're hearing about cash calls and deals not working out. So really the question that I have been asking myself too is, you know, because I'm a passive investor beyond what I do with our stuff. We have 200 million in multifamily assets, uh, you know, with Bronson Equity, but I also have my own portfolio, what I do with my passive investments, I'm always looking, what is the best investment out there? And I'm going to give you three of my favorites. I'm going to get you what I'm looking at right now and how you vet these deals. So we're going to jump into it. I've got a great quote for you at the end. We're going to go over three easy steps. Let's jump in. Okay. So my three favorite alternative asset classes, right? So we have, you know, real estate is considered an alternative asset, which I think it, you know, should be called a real asset. All this other stuff is real assets, but Wall Street has done a good job to tell us that these are alternative, but uh, they're awesome. And I love actually, I don't mind the alternative title because it makes me think that I'm doing something a little different than what a lot of other people are doing. And that's how people become wealthy, not by following the herd, but by doing something different. So well done for being here and learning about some alternative strategies. So my three top favorite investments right now. And this is for my own personal portfolio. This is not pitching any sort of deal or any sort of offer. This is just kind of what I am interested in. Uh, the first one is ATM machine funds. Um, I was a little skeptical when I first heard about this years ago, I decided to invest a few years ago, loved it as a passive investor, found that it's it, for me, it's been the most predictable monthly cash flow investment that I have. And I love it. High returns, uh, depreciation that's actually better than real estate depreciation uh, because you're buying physical equipment, which when you sell a multifamily property, it, you know, in five years, whatever, you know, the years you didn't use, which it might be a, you know, 20 to 30 year depreciation schedule, you've got to recapture that. So you actually have a recapture. Well, with ATM machines, you don't. It's equipment, it's similar to laundromats, it just depreciates to zero. And so you get that big write-off without any sort of recapture. Uh, we work with a very established fourth largest operator of ATM machines in the country, great track record, all that. So I love, love, love the consistency of the cash flow, the tax benefits, and just the, uh, you know, some real, some parameters of that. Uh, the second strategy that I love is called a private equity roll-up strategy. Now, private equity roll-up, it reminds me of like a fruit roll-up, right? Where you had those things when you were a kid and you'd kind of roll up the, you know, you have the fruit leather and you'd roll it up and it, they were just really tasty. Actually, I'm getting kind of hungry. Maybe I'll go eat one now, but uh, very, very tasty. Uh, and these are also very tasty as well. And they work with, you know, car washes, dental practices, medical practices, physical therapy, retail, gas stations, you name it. Uh, what'll happen is, you know, if somebody has a gas station, it'll sell for, you know, a certain multiple, maybe five or 10 times earnings. But if you have 50 gas stations together, it'll sell for 20 times earnings or more, right? And so we've done this, you know, as a passive investor, as well as with our group in the past, we have offered, uh, you know, something called Tommy's Express, a car wash group that, uh, you know, as a franchise, it's very profitable. And if you have less than 10 of these typically sells for 10 times earnings. If you've got 50 of them, it can sell for 20 to 30 times earnings, right? So you're getting none of the cash flow from the deal. And also there's a chance to share in the upside as well and something like that, which is awesome. So that's a cool deal. Um, and then another one I, I'm really bullish on right now is oil and gas, the energy space. We've done something in the technology side of oil and gas, but just having, and I've invested passively in deals that are just steady cash flow that offer some taxable benefits as well. Uh, there's some opportunity to reduce uh, ordinary income. Uh, you know, if you're a general partner in one of these deals, again, I'm, I don't have any specific recommends for this, but this, this does exist out there. It's a high upside. And then, um, you know, some believe that right now we're in a commodity super cycle, which just means that we're on the upswing here for where commodities are going to go. They're just printing so much money. Uh, there's incredible need for energy. There's a shortage of development of energy because of all this green technology has actually led to a shortage of actual just, you know, continued development in going after uh, more oil and gas and things like that. So lots of upsides. Those are my three favorite. Um, so the question I get sometimes when I talk to investors, I've had over 1,500 one-on-one -on -one phone calls with high net worth investors. Uh, one of the questions comes is, how do I find these deals? Like, where are you finding these deals, Bronson? How do you how do you get knowledge of these things? I'm not even hearing about this stuff. Well, you know, there is there are some secrets to be able to find great deals. And the first thing is networking. You've got to be willing as a passive investor, as an operator, as somebody who wants to be in the space, you've got to go to events. 
And if you're in a big metro like me, I'm in Los Angeles, we run a meetup once a month. We have you know typically 80 people show up, it's awesome. And when I'm there, I'm just always asking, hey, what are you doing? What are you working on? What's going on? And I hear about unique deals. People will tell me, oh, I saw this deal, whatever, so send that to me. And that's just a great way to be able to get in the deal flow. Another thing, if you go to national conferences, it seems like Dallas, Texas, Tons of great conferences there. There's conferences I'm speaking at the next couple of months in uh, Phoenix. Uh, I'm speaking at the Vertical Street Ventures Conference. I'm speaking at a, something called Multifamily Wealth Project in Vegas. So these are these are things that are coming up, um, and they're just conferences that are on multifamily or they're on you know other investing spaces. And people will let you know about the things that they're doing, particularly in other alternative assets. You can also get onto podcasts, hear about deal flow, get on people's deal lists. I noticed a lot of real estate people are starting to do, like us, we're doing things outside of real estate. Um, I also have a friend named Josh, and he always, every time I talk to him, he's just, a, he's a very savvy investor, uh, he's done some active and passive stuff, but he always says, hey, have you heard about any deals that are really unique or you think I should take a look at? And that's just a great question that when you talk to anybody who's in the sphere, just start asking that question. I, he asked me like literally every single time I talk to him, and I talk to him fairly frequently. And so, you know, but I do, I see things that come across that are very unique, and being in the know and asking that question, you're gonna, you're gonna hear about five times as many deals than if you didn't ask that question. So if we were to ask it, Another question is, how do I vet these deals, Bronson? How do we vet a car wash deal? Or how do you vet an ATM deal? That just sounds like, how do I even do this? Well, I actually have a book coming out soon that's gonna talk about how do you vet deals and how do you get into alternative assets you know, in real estate, outside of real estate. And there's a lot of similarities uh, you know, between how you vet a real estate deal and how you vet alternative assets. I actually have a course that's coming out here soon as well that's gonna do the kind of similar stuff. How do, you, how do you get in these alternative assets? So I really talk about it in three things, right? You've got the market, you've got the deal, I'm sorry, you got the market, you got the sponsor, and you got the deal. So it's almost like a funnel, right? So you've got the market, which is up here. So for example, in multifamily, we buy you know, Jacksonville, Florida. This is where we buy our properties. A lot of times we'll buy stuff there. We like that market, it's a growing market. Um, we're seeing population growth, job growth, income growth. So what is the alternative asset market? Well, what is it, what's happening in the oil and gas space, right? What's happening there? Well, is it growing? Well, yes, we think there's increased demand. We think this is happening. We think the market is a good market to be in for a lot of different reasons. So you look at the market itself, and then you go down to who is the sponsor? Who's the group that's actually operating this? Have they done deals like this before? What is their track record? What's their prior experience? What are the things that they're doing? And that allows you to kind of see, okay, here's the market, but here's this specific group and how they fit within that market. And the last thing, really the last thing is the deal. What is the specific deal? Does it make sense how you're gonna make money? Do you understand how you could lose money, right? I usually think there's one or two primary risks of any deal of ways that you could lose money. Our ATM deal, the primary risk is, will people stop using physical cash? Um, now that we find there's 5% of the population that's kind of you know immigrants or cash businesses or different things, and they're using cash all the time. We haven't seen it reduced over the last 10 years. It's been really solid. So again, it's it's looking at that specific market, the, the, the sponsor and the deal, and making sure you really understand that. So we're looking these days, you know, be open to new deals. Just We're looking at things like timber and energy and roll-up strategies and other things that are very unique. If you have a unique deal, uh, send me an email, Bronson at bronsonequity.com. Would love to see uh, just, you know, some deals, particularly outside of real estate, just what's out there, because there are stuff that a lot of people don't know about, and we're trying to bring that to uh, retail investors to try to you know educate as well as just you know provide opportunities for investment. I want to show this quote for you, and this uh, comes from uh, uh, his name is William uh, Adair, William Penn Adair, and he says, "Find out where people are going." and buy the land before they get there. So again, this goes back to the question of a trend or a market. If you see something that is going to be growing, you know, one trend that is happening and is going to continue is inflation. So if you can find a way to not hold dollars and get another other real assets, you're gonna do very well over time just because you know if you hold dollars, you're gonna lose the money there. Or a big trend is, is senior living, right? If you're in senior living, that's a great place to be because people are getting older and older in the US and be more places to live for assisted living. So uh, check out this video that I did. This is a, it's called the 2023 Alternative Asset Summit. A few friends of mine, just awesome players in the space have raised hundreds of millions of dollars for different alternative assets. You can check it out up here. It was a great uh, really kind of a panel that we did. And then if you haven't joined our investment club, you're not hearing about these unique deals. I promise you some of these you are not hearing about anywhere else. We've had some really, we have a couple of exclusive offerings that no one else is offering. So check that out in the link below. And then uh, if you can stick a comment below about what topic you want me to cover, uh, we're gonna choose someone from this month and give a $100 Amazon gift card away. And we'll feature you on this channel, talk about you on this channel. So stick that in the comments below. We'd love for you to win that. 
Thanks for taking the time to educate yourself. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.